and also yeah it's it's true i for one also i received the cane <laughs> in fact i think i was told that when i was still very young very very young maybe around three two three four maybe that range of years that my mom was say uh, i used to cry a lot especially in the night I will be crying and crying and my dad just come back from work and needs peace and always I will be crying and crying there was one day that he said this is too much he carried his belt leather belt I can't remember that somebody flogged me actually but that he flogged me that my mom was even crying that he should stop and things like that and apart from that, even when I was growing old, I mean, doing something wrong, and we have all different ways that they've told you, like, okay, maybe you remove your eye uh, lashes and put it in your head, they will forget, and things like that. So we we'll do things like that and all that, but you still cane you. But one thing that I knew or I, I came to realize then was that they were doing these things actually for my good. Like, there was no, I never ever thought that my dad was wicked or my mom that uses his slippers on me when i'm when i've gone like astray really or when i'm fighting with my other brother and we are disturbing my mom and he carries the slippers want to hit us and i'm looking at her that she's wicked i never thought of that because i actually knew that okay they love me and they are doing this for me i think uh I don't know what you guys think. I think what parents are lacking today is the fact that even when they are punishing, they don't tell their children that you are, I'm doing this because you did this. Exactly. That's, <coughs> that's, um, that's the... Like, okay, well, you did this, so you are undergoing this punishment because of this that you did. It's not because I hate you. I love you so much, and I'm doing that because I want you to learn. I think we we I don't know uh, like, I don't know what you like, think about like, that. Like I, the last time I spoke, I I made mention of something like that. Yeah, when parents let the children know the reason behind the punishment they receive, the children get to understand that for every sin there is a punishment, mm -hmm. and they grow up with that. And when they grow up with that, it becomes part of them. That any time, any day, anywhere they know that for every sin, there is a punishment that helps them in their living. Now, the fact that parents, some, some parents these days do not do that is a flaw on their own part. It's a failure on their own part. I mean, it's, it's wrong as a parent if you fail to tell your child the reason for that particular punishment, especially when the punishment is a harsh one. Mm -hmm. You just need to explain to the child, this is the reason why you are getting this punishment. Yeah. That we are knocking it into the child's head that look, you misbehave, you get punished. Mm. But I think many parents, maybe as a result of busy schedules, many parents are very busy these days. They leave home very early in the morning, maybe like 5 a.m. They don't get home until maybe about 9 p.m. You know, struggle to make money to take care of the family. So um, children misbehave and they don't even know, they're not aware. You know, something weekends, they just want to rest. Mm -hmm. So the children are mommy, mommy, or daddy, daddy, and Please go, 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 go. I don't need to holler now. I want to rest. Yeah. So these yeah. things, I cannot totally blame the parents, but then I still blame them again because it's your duty to take care of the children. It's your duty to instill discipline in them. It's your duty to raise them up as you should raise your children to be useful citizens or useful persons to the society at the end of the day. Mm. So that's basically how I see it. So, okay. Now, if, uh, what should people like, we're talking about it's one thing to give birth to a child mm -hmm. and it's another thing for the child to be raised mm -hmm. and in the Africa contest mm -hmm. it is said that it is the community that raises yeah. the child what do you think about parents who go to schools and harass teachers for instilling discipline on their children um i i for sure if i'm a parent there are, there are, there are two ways to this if um if I'm a parent and you discipline my child to the extent that he or she comes back with bruises, you know, I, I would really go to the school to ask questions like, why? Why did you do this? Um, and I'm not one that would, that would think that no matter what somebody has done to you, you shouldn't even go to that extent of 
bruising the child or making the child, you know. Um, in my own secondary school, we never, we never, they never used um, the corporal punishment because um, the Jesuits would, would give you books to summarize. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> when, you, when you summarize those volumes of books, <laughs> then uh, <laughs> next, next day you behave in class. Oh, in, sorry. In cases of today, whereby you give them books and they say, "No, I'm not summarizing." Uh, that, that's that, then I, I would I'll fault the parents because there should be a reason um, for the, for for that. So it it will be up to the to the teachers to tell them, "I am giving you this book to summarize um, because of this." For example, I, I teach catechism, and um, if I tell you to come by six and you do not give me any reason or excuse why you are not coming by six your parents are not calling you calling me or anything and you come by maybe 10 past six i will say tell you clearly for coming late and for not informing kindly go home mm. and come back tomorrow and the next day you see that uh, everywhere will be will be okay <laughs> great that is also another factor to consider we are talking about preventive system. Yeah. A system is something made up of different parts or factors. There is a switch, there is a wire, there is a light. I put on the switch, no light. Maybe there is no nepa. Mm -hmm. Maybe the wire is burned. Maybe the bulb is burned. I don't know. Sure. From the switch there, everything should work. And this is where today the problem comes because the system, the society mm. is so complex that even the best parents with the best intentions don't get the result they the, want. That they want, exactly. Because as soon as the child starts socializing, grows, the, mass, the teachers are not the parents, are not the priests, are not the teachers, they are PR. And the PR group the pressure mm -hmm. and we know but with the access to all this media for people who are not prepared to use exactly. it and mis exactly. misuse it so that is very very that is the real challenge but, but i think that is where the role of the parents really comes into play because as a parent you know that in this modern time you know that children have access to all this information you know some of the, con the content of some of these things that they won't get so it's your duty as a parent to regulate these things. And then you also know that as a parent, your children are vulnerable to peer pressure. Mm -hmm. That is why the Bible also says, train up the child the way to go when the child goes up, it's not depart from it. At the early stages, instill that fear in them that they should be afraid of you, especially daddies. The children should be afraid of, they can be friends with mommy, but for the daddies, they shouldn't be friends side per se. They could be friends, but at least there should be a limit to the relationship. There, there are ways that daddies can create that fear. You know, you can be very playful with your child. The moment the child crosses the line, punishment, immediately. So the child gets to know that, look, there's a level you play to, you shouldn't cross that level. Mm -hmm. That way they get to become scared of that in the home. And once there's that fear at home, the children now grow with that. So by the time they are getting to the point of being influenced by their peers, because they have grown with that fear of daddy and mommy at home. They know that mommy and daddy would not like this. Let me withdraw from it. Mm. So that is where the, mm. the, the influence of the parents come in. And that's why it's important that at the early stages of this growth of the children, you start instilling discipline in them as parents. Do I want to call it fear? Um, yeah. I wouldn't want to call it fear because if it is fear, then the, the, the child won't be living um, freely. So free, like um, yeah, yeah. like John Bosco said. Uh, yeah. So I, 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 I want to say, <laughs> I want to say, rather, I want to say rather respect to that um, to that person mm -hmm. of or, or that persons in the house. Um, respect comes in the sense that. Um, you you respect what daddy and mommy does not like you know what they don't like and you try to respect that and um, you you don't you don't do it you know and they are bringing you up also in that kind of way to be to have that dignity for and respect for yourself and also 
um, for for others, so that um, if 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 you are living in a place where you have fear of of the parents, then uh, the 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 self esteem of the child begins to to go down. Mm-hmm. But when you are living in a in a place that everybody can speak, but you respect daddy and mommy, then I, I think. Um, it would be a whole different. Uh, design. I don't know. He, he spoke yeah. about uh, that aspect ah. of fear. So I don't know what he... that fear affected me a lot. Mm-hmm. That self esteem came went down. Outside, I will not even be able to express myself freely because of that fear factor I got from my dad. Mm. If they beat me for school, if I got beaten in school, I can't come home to report. Because they will beat you anymore. But they will tell me, we all have oh, that same you, experience. Yeah, even, yeah, I mean, they will tell me, I've trained you the way I'm supposed to. You can't even, I can't even, I don't have the courage to talk to him. It was when I grew old, like when I got to secondary school, because so maybe the sport activity, I was able, like flexibility came in, I was able to move out. Then this man, Stop beating my dad. I call him this man. <laughs> stop beating you. He stopped using sense. Um, cane on us. But he, he, he makes sure he still like use another form of discipline. He told us when you come home late after four or five o'clock, he no suffer outside. for you. <laughs> and me, uh, uh, I don't play ball. I need food now. I go come off stadium with the wrong go house. And <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna yeah. don't fall, man. Yeah. I don't run. Yeah. And later I discover maybe the fear is there. But he tried, he helped me in a way that is even helping me now. Like what he did then, maybe he didn't explain well to me by not letting me communicate. We're not free. My dad, we supposed to talk. But not then, we know if we talk. We know but now, we, what about now? Now, I will talk. If he, if, if he call me, <laughs> like, see, that's, that's what yeah, matters. That's the point. That's what matters. Uh, yes. Because, but are you still afraid of him the way you are afraid of him that no, last time? Go, it's not no, possible. No, it's not no, possible. Be, no, but it's still, it, like, it, now, if something got missing, he would expect me to relate to him the way, like, if I, if I have any difficulty, he expects me to tell him. No, I can't even tell him. Now. Okay. I will take okay. care of it myself. You have trained me to be that way. Mm. Yeah. He expected me to, oh, John, oh, you are supposed to, oh, you've not called me since last week. Oh, dad, I'm sorry, I'm busy. But for my mind, in, in my mind, I, I remember, I, I've not called him yesterday. I've not called him deep, but I overlook. It's my dad. I know how to undo, like, we know ourselves. But mm. are you doing that out of, um, let's say, out of you are revenging mm. what <laughs> happened when you were a kid or... It's just the way you want to handle it. Mm, not, not the way I want to handle. I'm not even revenge. Let, let me just. I'm program. He has programmed me that way. Mm-hmm. When I was little, till I grew old, this man doesn't want us to talk. Like mm. when my dad goes home, nobody. Even I, I, if, if I want to discuss with my brother, I was. <laughs> you see? And he's expecting magic to just because I'm a comedian, I talk, I make people laugh. He wants me to oh talk to the thing is still there. Yeah. I can dialogue yeah. with a lot of people, but when it comes to my dad, I need to be you have to yeah. go back into yourself. You see, so you see right? So sorry, let me just let me just quickly say this. You see, I think it's it also depends on the individual. Okay. Yeah. Right? Because for me, I can exp- earlier explain my both parents were disciplinarians. But me and my mom, very close. We're very, very close. We're very, very close. And now I was already in my twenties before me and my dad became like you know, relatable. Yes. Yeah. Before we started relating the way we ought to relate. Reason growing up, I was afraid. But that didn't make me timid. Mm. You wouldn't say that you come to where I am now, begin to oppress me, and because my dad is the type that uh, has put fear in me, that you oppress me, it's not possible. I will fight with you. Even as little as I was, I was this kind of very outspoken person. You don't come and oppress me. You don't try it. That was me. But I had that fear. For my dad, especially. My dad, no, don't go there. And I'm sure many families had it like that. I mean, our age, the growing up, we had it like, just like you even explained. That fear comes in, but I think it is now left for the individual child to know how to manage these things. You know, being afraid of daddy doesn't mean that you should be timid. Mm. It doesn't mean that when you go out, you shouldn't 
relate the way you're supposed to relate. No, but in his own Doesn't, case, wow. you know, in his own case was different because he was with the grandmom and yeah. dad. Yeah, wasn't mom was not there. But well, that's why I said it depends yeah. on the individual. Yeah. 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 So mom was, yeah, yes, Father Ricardo. I would not like to be misunderstood mm. when I said the society, society, as if the fault is on the society. Mm. Parents remain the number one yeah. educator <laughs> of the children. The first responsibility after giving birth is to train them, to educate them, to bring them that number one. Because before the child goes in touch with external world, how many years go? Mm-hmm. How many years he spend the family? So that, yeah. Uh, yeah. that is why. And yeah. so maybe nowadays is in this transition, many parents are not ready to, to face with the new approach the education of their children. Things are changing fast. We don't blame anybody, but uh, it's a fact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's just... So, but uh, parents are number one. All the other cooperate are helping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come later. Yes. 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 The uh, peer group comes later. The teachers come later. The priests come later. Everything comes later, but parents, mm-hmm. the family. And number one. I don't know, you, you know better how strong or solid is the family in Africa with all this turmoil and uh, it's it's actually going down uh, i mean that hold that family hold on children especially the contemporary families it's very it's it's kind of what tree is what tree what we had in our days and still today you call your dad and you laugh you talk is this same man that uh, disciplined you exactly. yeah i was telling jerry before we began the the, the podcast how um a lady from uh uh, from Poland came to Ibadan to for this experience, a uh, voluntary experience for holiday camp and all that. I also came back that period for holiday, so I visited Ibadan. So we met, we talked, and it happened that she had been in Rome and Italy and things like that. So we discussed. So it happened that she experienced a little girl who was crying in the oratory, and for her, why should you be crying? Why are you crying? And I said that she reported that the brother beat her. So she was furious. Why? But she was surprised that the small girl was saying that, no, I deserve it because I did this. So that led to other discussions about beating and all that in Africa. She wanted to know and all that. I tried to explain to her what we were talking about, that the child already knows that, oh, it is because of the fact that I did one, two, three things. That's why my other brother beats me. Now, tomorrow, I don't think that child will start hating on the brother and say that, oh, when I was small, you beat me and things like that. No, because the child already knew that, okay, there is, I did this, I was wrong on this. And I think that is what uh, people are missing or families are I'm missing today. You said something that's very, very important. Okay. Timing also. Mm-hmm. People don't have time to yes. take care of their children and things like that. Yeah, but, so what do they have to do in this case? Well, like, um, let me start from this point. You know, growing up, we are really disciplined. And today, we get to appreciate those things our parents did. Because those things shaped our lives as made us who we are today. You know? So it is... I mean, it's expected that parents should at least, if not 100%, 50% imbibe what you were trained with from your parents in training your own children. Use the same tools and skills that you were trained with. In training your own children, if not 100%, at least 50%, that will help in building the children into better persons in life. Because today, you see children sometimes they just walk past an elderly person that they even know and they pretend like they didn't even see the person no you don't greet you don't greet it don't bother it's it's nothing to them i mean it's, it's normal but even for me as i am like this now my age now i know the person and the elderly person i greet sometimes even when i don't know the person i just me assessing the person i say this person is a very elderly person i greet you know i have never met the person before so that's the discipline that's the training the value also yes, instilled, yeah. That's what has been that has been has been acquired from my parents or from the parentage. And so if at our age now that we're parents, we're able to do even if it's 50% of what our parents put in us. I mean, I think I don't think we would have been would do badly even 
we'll do well. I mean, at 50%, coupled with the current uh, challenges we have, no time, um, work, trying to meet up, and all that, all the challenges we have as parents <laughs> today, which is yeah. not the same with um, the time of our parents. Exactly. Not, um, um, Even just to add something to that, talking about greeting and all that, yesterday uh, I happened to be in a career mm-hmm. and uh, I met a friend, a youth, who is married now, has a child and all that. We met, oh, father, how are you? How are you? And just like that. Ah, is that your kid? Yes. Mm-hmm. And the dad said, greet. A very small, I think he's, she's like two years old. Mm-hmm. He said, greet. And she knelt down. Mm-hmm. That's it, really. She knelt down. To, I would say, oh, if I had money on me, then I would have given to that child because so little child and greet. And she just went down on her knees and greeted me. Now, this is making me wow. As if it is not something that we should. This is our culture. This is Africa mm. and things like that. We are losing this culture. We are losing these values and things like that. And what is happening? Last words. Last words. If not, we will not live here today. Last words. <laughs> we have to avoid throwing away the child with the dirty water. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, this yeah. is the, the, the yeah. problem. Yeah. To be able to blend the new trends yeah. with the traditional exactly. solid values. Exactly. And who can do this? Still the parents. Parents. The new generations. The youth. This is a big, big, great message for Don Bosco. Because some, at a certain age, it's very difficult to to be able to go through this process. But the youth have the serious responsibility to build this good mixture. The synergy. Solid yeah. values, African values, and modern world. Modern world. So the responsibility of educators or uh, Salesians or whoever, <laughs> Salesian family, Eh? is to move ahead with the young generations. Great. Thank you, Father Ricardo. Uh, uh, Father Chike? Uh, I think uh, I would also go with um, a word of Don Bosco to, to say that with our feet on the ground and our hearts in heaven. Mm-hmm. So um, modern parents need to put their feet on the ground as much as they want also the, their own hearts and the hearts of their children to be set to heaven, especially as they are training them amidst all the new trends and all the new things that, that are coming. Importantly, they are to follow up their children in all that they do. In school, with their, with the friends they, 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 they go out with, they they are the ones who put their feet on the ground. Their feet should be firmly on the ground. Thank you for that, Chikizi. Uh, Mr. Jerry? Okay, so for, for me, I think uh, parents, modern parents should um, know that it's not only by using the cane that you can actually discipline a child. You, there are other measures you can make use of in disciplining the child to get the child to behave the way and exactly with the way you want the child to behave. So these are the the, the measures now depends on the parents themselves. Mm-hmm. What measures do you think would be best for you to discipline your child to achieve that behavior which you expect from the child. Like they say, discipline is a system whereby children are trained in orderliness, self-control, good character, power of cooperation, so are the best to be achieved in the society. So it's expected that parents are able to put in that discipline in the children, not necessarily by using the cane, but other measures for the children to achieve the best in the society. Good, thank you. And uh, Akin John Bosco. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to say to the parents of today, our parents of today, it's not easy to be a parent <laughs> demanding and what I would want them to do is to stop using levity and don't just free do whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Hold them tight, teach them the godly ways, use that discipline on them. Use it, it's for their future. Mine is working for me in a positive way. But I've, the discipline my dad used on me, my parents used on me, they've helped me so well 
And please, daddy and mommy, don't leave them. They need your help. They need your discipline. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you and thank everyone for this wonderful conversation. I hope it was a wonderful conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Father Ricardo was saying that. The listeners will tell. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. But I think from here, from here even, it's, um, it was interesting and uh, getting the feedbacks from different, from Father Ricardo, the idea of Don Bosco and also from his own experience, Jerry, uh, the uh, a family man for the chikeze, a priest, a youth here, and my humble self. Who am I? Nobody. I'm just the anchor, Tony Mabio. So, guys, we thank you for listening and watching. Stay tuned for the next uh, series that will be coming up soon. You'll get to know the theme of that series. So bye and have a wonderful Thank you. time. Happy face the most After face, happy face. face. Bye. bye. The Micah.